Our society loves coffee, a fact that is impossible to deny. The product is so deeply attached to us that we have a mealtime named after it, except for the UK and some of its former colonies, but they don't know what they're missing. The culture around coffee has gone so far that in Albania, for example, there are 592 cafes per 100,000 people. That means one cafe for every 163 inhabitants. The US is so obsessed with coffee that according to the Huffington Post, 52% of coffee drinkers prefer to skip shower time in the morning than give up coffee. Here, 64% of adults consume an average of 3.1 cups per person per day. That's 4.2 kilograms of coffee per person per year. 35% of that consumption is from the Finnish people, where a person consumes 12 kilograms of coffee per year, placing Finland at the top of the ranking of coffee consumers in the world. But if I tell you that despite these numbers, this product is in a crisis and the world will probably run out of it, and what if I told you that the plantations are facing extinction and producers are moving to other activities? Now we're going to explain what's happening with coffee production throughout the world, what is causing this crisis and how we can solve it. Behind the typical cup of coffee that people buy in a place like Starbucks, there's a big production chain behind it that starts in places like Brazil, Colombia, Ethiopia or Honduras. Farmers harvest the coffee beans and after some grinding, roasting and exporting, the coffee arrives at the cafe so you can order your cup. The problem we're talking about is a substantial drop in the price of coffee bean production around the world. The drop is evident in this chart. As you can see, the price per pound went from $1.6 in 2017 to 88 cents per pound in last May, the lowest of the previous decade. That price is also lower than the $1 average needed for producers to cover their investment in production. The leading cause of all this was the surplus from Brazil. They set a production record in the past few years, leading them to place millions of kilograms of coffee into the market, creating an oversupply. Meanwhile, the value of the Brazilian currency, the real, fell in the international markets. These two factors boosted the exports and earnings for the producers, but it decreased the value of the coffee pound in dollars. Due to the drop in the real, the fall in price did not affect the local economy. And as Brazil is the biggest coffee producer in the world, this movement triggered a large chain reaction across the rest of the world's coffee producers. At this point, it is essential to understand that coffee production works in such a way where they have only one big harvest in a specific period of time during the year. Farmers have to save those earnings to survive during the rest of the year. And due to the low pricing, the profits just were not enough, leading producers to look for other activities or migrate looking for new opportunities. Have you heard about the large group of Central American people walking to the US? This crisis pushes a lot of coffee producers to be part of those groups. In Africa, the consequences are worse because most of these farmers are producing to subsist, so their basic needs are highly sensitive to the price of coffee. Also, climate change isn't helping anything and it's threatening the survival of the Arabica coffee, one of the most famous coffee beans in the world, which is produced in Ethiopia, the biggest producer in the continent. And here's where we find another issue, climate change. Even though it is not a direct cause of the actual crisis on the price, it is jeopardizing the future of the coffee plant. This is affecting the suitable lands to grow coffee around the world. So by 2050, only 40% of the area that grows coffee in Brazil will be appropriate to farm that year. In Central America, the proper territory will decrease by 52%. And in Southeast Asia, the suitable land will be only 70% of what we have now. We also need to consider that global warming is raising the impact of plague, downpours and landslides in worldwide agriculture. And last but not least, COVID-19. At the moment of writing, different reports say that global demand has kept being strong since the epidemic started. But on the other side, the US National Coffee Association is projecting a reduction in the global demand for coffee of a 0.95% reduction compared to 2018. You probably will think that this is a modest decrease, but as this is an industry based on little producers, this close to 1% will affect the economy of hundreds of families. And now you're probably asking yourself, what if coffee roasters just pay more to the producers? Issue fixed, right? Well, it's not that simple because the shipping of the coffee, warehouse maintenance and labor costs are expensive too. Also, some of them are placed in cities with a high cost of living, so the markup margins for roasters is not so significant. A very similar situation is facing coffee stores. Most of the expenses are now from non-coffee products such as wages and rent. So only around 2% of the money paid for a cup of coffee goes to the producer's country. But what about Starbucks? 
We're going to mention them later. After all of this, the Federación Nacional de Cafeteros of Colombia goes further and blames big multinational companies for covering 75% of the demand of production and creating what they call a big imbalance in the value chain, where the producers around the world only get 10% of the $200 billion coffee industry. For example, if you pay $3.50 in New York City for a cup of coffee produced in Colombia, the farmer who grew the plant earns about $0.05. Cents. And if the producer was from Uganda, for example, it could be even less than that. This situation for producers is so tricky that it is common to see children or elderly people picking coffee. However, the consumption of coffee from final producer hasn't stopped growing. According to the ICO, the demand for coffee is growing 2% annually, and as farmers continue abandoning the activity, there are chances of a world shortage in the future. The coffee production industry is the primary source of revenue for 125 million people around the world, a little bit less than the population of Japan. That reason alone requires us to fix this situation for the 25 million families living from coffee. People and organizations have been suggesting a wide variety of solutions for this problem, and let's see some of them. Jeffrey Sack, an economist and UN advisor, suggested the idea to create a global annual fund of $10 billion for the coffee industry, managed by the UN. This is a lot of money if we take into account that the UN destined around $7 billion to fight HIV in the past two years. The leader of Café for Change, a social-oriented coffee organization, seeks the solution in charging 10 cents in every cup sold around the world. The idea is to take the money to improve the quality of life for producers. Here, the challenge is to create all the logistics that collect this fund and manage it most efficiently. But it would be exciting to learn more about this idea in the future. In Colombia, the world's third biggest producer, a group of young people developed a cryptocurrency based on the value of the product. It's named coffee. The idea is that these producers can take advantage of the plant rise in the value of the currency so they can increase their earnings. Although this project is backed by the World Coffee Federation, organizations like Café for Change claim that this project won't fix the structural problems created by the market, aside from the controversy that surrounds cryptocurrencies. But for now, companies like Starbucks made relief payments of $20 million to different farmers in Mexico, Nicaragua, El Salvador, and Guatemala just to ensure that farmers keep working on coffee, where the production costs are 30% more expensive than in Brazil, the world's biggest producer. Some organizations, like the previously mentioned Federación Nacional de Cafeteros of Colombia, suggest new antitrust laws to find a solution, such as making the big companies pay fair prices to producers, something that is not that easy to do. They also discussed the idea of creating an agreement between the four biggest producing countries in the world and a fixed price for every pound, but the WTO warns against the possible cartels that this practice could create. Seeking solutions against the problems related to global warming, a group of scientists at the University of California released an open-access Arabica coffee sequenced genome, with the idea to modify it and to make it suitable for more climate conditions, ensuring the future of this variety of coffee. As we can see, there are a lot of pieces in this puzzle, and organizations need to work together to make more people win. And the clock is ticking, so it's better to find a change soon. Please let us know in the comments if you have experienced this situation from a personal perspective. That's all for this video. Remember to subscribe if you have not done it yet, comment if you have something to say, and push that like button. That's all for now. Stay fresh.